And thanks, Alessandro. Good morning, everyone. Hey, good morning. To comment, you had the best slides at the right routing area open meeting, Gunter. Best presentation. <laughs> the longest one for sure. Yeah. I think that Scion guy, after he saw yours, he was going to hightail it back to Zurich. <laughs> hey, good morning, guys. Can you hear my voice? Uh, Do you hear me well? Yes, yes, yes. Works perfectly. Yes, perfectly. Let's give it one more minute and then let's get started. Okay, let's get started. So we are like uh, one minute past 10. So this is uh, one minute past uh, yeah, 10 o'clock. So let's get started with our session here. So we have a, a two hour slot and the agenda is you know, reasonably lightly populated. So I think we have enough time for Q&A if that actually is necessary. And yeah, so as you can see also, you know, there's like nobody sitting in the front due to unforeseen circumstances. Uh, it is unfortunately, you know, the way it is right now. Uh, luckily, you know, beyond the initial hiccup of MeetEcho, you know, having a small issue that actually has been fixed now also. So I think, you know, everything is ready to, to, to go as such. So welcome all to Link State Vector Routing uh, Working Group. Uh, First, some administrivia. So this is the note. Well, you probably have seen it already, right? You know by now, and it just says like you know that um, you know if you're participating into the ITF and whatever you say as one word, it's like an IPR uh, relationship here. You have to take to, to be into account. Now, in addition to that, uh, there is also some anti-harassment procedures and code of conduct. So be friendly, be kind, be nice. And don't make communicate you know discussions like personal but keep it on topic uh, on a technical level also for meeting tips and this is especially you know important now <laughs> maybe not so much because we only have like three people in the room i believe so if you want to you know uh, ask a question you know use the tools and then you know we will be able to grant you access to the microphone through the remote access tools here from from the chairs if you're local, just hit the little thingy here, you know, what you can see on the right-hand side, and then you will be able to get into the queue uh, through that channel. So we also have a few interesting links, as you can see. Uh, you probably have seen them already, and, you know, these are just reference in here. I'm gonna go on further. So for the rest, uh, so for the Jabber Scrap, we have a Jabber you know, tool, so because Meet, Meet, Meet Echo is directly integrated with it. Uh, for Minutes, uh, Victor is going to take care of that one. And then let's go towards the agenda of what we have. So as I mentioned, so we have a reasonably light agenda and we have like a, a long time schedule planned you know, ahead of us. We have three uh, draft topics to talk about. Uh, first is the LSVR fluid reduction work, which is you know being to you know be reintroduced again, and then we have uh, two drafts uh, from Randy, which are speaking of, you know uh, like L3 DL, but then over uh, layer three uh, technology itself. Uh, the first two topics. Uh, so for the next step, so where are we with the working group itself and with our work? So. So finally, you know, we were able to request the IANA code points for our main specification draft. It has been reviewed and it actually has been re-edited also. 
Uh, we are now at dash of version 16, and I believe this is ready to go towards IESG, if I'm not you know, incorrect. Is that correct, uh, Victor? Okay, it's probably not connected on the mic. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so so we'll be doing that, you know, very shortly. So it took you know a lot longer than as anticipated for getting to the code points, uh, mainly because you know the chairs you know had to figure out how to request those things. So that took more time than anticipated. So sadly enough, but we are there now, and the draft is ready. It has been reviewed a few times, so we believe it is reasonably uh, okay. You know, it is actually in a good shape. And then the other thing, what we were. Uh, what we discussed already the, during the previous IETF meeting is we will have to reshorter the the SVR working group, and we had to wait upon the moment we could you know submit or, or finalize our prime draft here, the BGP SPF, and ship it towards IESG so that we actually have our work you know our main work item finished from the working group, and that could actually kick off then like reshorter of the LSVR uh, shorter itself. And the main goal would be to actually include the L3DL work as formal entities of the working group itself. So this is this, you know, this discussion we will actually kick off, you know, starting from next week. And we will start, you know, discussing like, you know, what and how the, the new charter is going to be, and then check with the working group, you know, uh, if there's like interested people on that one and and to form, you know, the, the correct text for that. Uh, any questions on that or remarks? Otherwise, we will move towards you know the draft presentations. Okay, nothing. I hope everybody's microphone is working though. <laughs> so let me go to the first one. Uh, so hi Mo, are, are you ready? Do you want me to drive the slides, or will you be driving the slides? Uh, you drive the slides. Thank you. Okay, here we are. Hello, everyone. I'm going to talk about the BGP SPF flooding reduction. Next page. At first, I would like to thank AC, AO, and Donald for their valuable comments and suggestions uh, to the draft. Uh, we made uh, uh, some changes to the previous version. Personally, we simplified the draft through removing a complicated option, which is called the uh, reflected group option from the RR model, and then some editorial changes. Next page. So this is the current simplified revised flooding pr procedure in root reflector model. So basically, basically, BGP SPF speaker will send it linkers, link information to one or two root reflectors, even though we have um, a multiple root, root, root reflectors in the, in the network. After receiving the link state, the root reflector will just send the links to the information to the other BGP speakers. So this is a symbol. For example, in the light over here, we have two root reflectors, R1 and R2. We have a number of nodes, A, B, C, and D in the network. Node A will just send its link states to one root reflector, R1. It will not send its link states to RR2. After receiving the link state from node A, RR1 will send the link state to the other PGP SPF speakers. So this is the is symbol. And also the link state's flooding is reduced. Next page. The revised flooding procedure in node of connection model is not changed in, in the draft. So this um, procedure is similar to the one in the IGP flooding reduction. So every node 
has a flooding topology in the network, and then every node will send the link state's information to its peers on the flooding topology. So for example, we have a real network on the right, and, and we have a flooding topology on, on the left. Node A will only send link state's information to its peers on the flooding topology. So no, for example, node A will only send link states to node B and then node D, which are on the flooding topology. Node A will not send the link states to node C, even though node C is a peer of node A on the real topology, but node C is not peer of node A on the flooding topology. So in this way, we reduce the link state flooding in the network. So next page. So I think that's all. I think for uh, right now, the flooding reduction is simplified in the current draft. And also we would like comments. And also looks like the draft is uh, simplified and stable, stable. And I would also like adoption course if possible. Thank you. Any any questions uh, towards Haimo or on his work? Alvaro. Uh, hi, Alvaro Rathana. Um, I hate to say this, but I haven't read the draft. Um, I'm assuming the draft talks about how in the router reflector case, you select one router reflector over the other and how the second router reflector eventually gets the state gets the routes, right? So because if there's a failure and you only send the routes in one place, in one direction, then you're screwed, right? Um, and I'm assuming the draft also talks about how you select the flooding topology. Yes, 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 that's right. Those are details uh, are already in, in the draft. For example, uh, for selecting the router reflector, so we can select the, 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 uh, the router reflector with a minimum ID those uh, uh, details is in the draft. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you for your comments. Yeah. Any other questions from people in the room or remote? Okay, so Haimo. So I think one of the questions you put here on this slide also is, you know, is about adoption now. Frankly, I think it is, you know, it, it's a bit early on that, you know, before we adopt, you know, this kind of work, I would like to see some discussion actually on the email list about this and, and, and to, to get a sense, you know, of, of the people who are going to be contributing to the document, you know, in the future, you know, if, if they find it like, you know, if, if it is like something that they find useful or necessary for this particular environment and, you know, just basically to see like, you know, more, more discussion on the working group list at all, because I think, you know, in the last three or four or five months, actually, you know, the communication has been reasonably light. So I think, you know, if you would launch a question, it probably will trigger like lots of people, you know, paying attention and giving you feedback on, on where to go and how to do it. And and if not, at least, you know, it's actually a first step into the direction of, of you know, for, for having the group working on this particular uh, work item. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, then let me jump to Randy's slide. You have anything else to say, Victor, for, for about this? Thank you. Okay. Okay, Randy, you have full control of the deck. Hey, hey, hey Gunter? Yes. I got in the queue late. This is AC Lindum, Cisco Systems. Ah. I was just going to say, in, in terms of the Wemo draft, I, I, I've, I've read it uh, briefly. I haven't gone through all the corner cases, but we always, in, we always implied that we could do this, but we, you know, we kept it out of the base specification. So it's in line with our work. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. that we could, okay. that you 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 could reduce the flooding. Okay. And said it was out of scope in the base specification. So I think it, it it's definitely in the scope of work. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, AC. Okay. This draft. Um, excuse me, this was has not been customized for LSVR. When IDR working group looked at L3DL, they said, hey, how about also a layer three solution? So this is a cousin of L3DL customized for IDR discovery, EGP discovery in the data center. It's really two drafts, the usual suspects. It's uh, attempting to be very boring. And uh, one bit of philosophy throughout is it's not probabilistic, right? You'll see everything is lockstep and you know, it immediately switches to hopefully TLS, but at least TCP, et cetera, for just dead lockstep reliable protocols. Okay. It's like L3DL, except it's layer three. The PDUs will look very familiar to you. It uses one UDP multicast hello for initial discovery. And that's to find candidates for establishing real TCP. It's session oriented and resumable like L3DL. There's no retransmission needed because TCP does all that. It keeps the minimal needed state. So it's not retransmitting, it's not refreshing. The ends are supposed to remember what they're doing, and the protocol only sends changes. Due to the fact that it's over TCP TLS, it's reliable in order delivery, etc. Okay. The goal is to find neighbors, learn the I layer three addressing and bootstrap BGP, same as before with L3DL. You'll notice little stars once it has discovered the Affy Saffies. There's a little star in the blue up arrow because it doesn't have 7752 um, BGP LS communication to BGP. Um, there's some discussion of that going on in IDR. The feeling seems to be that. Um, it's that happens all under the table inside the implementation. I have some questions about that, which I'll say for the end. Remember, this isn't a routing protocol. It's just to discover layer three addresses on point to point and multi point. Type length value one on one. Um, we've got version number in here as a change. Um, this is the UDP hello. It's about to change because discussion in IDR, the flags is to say, hey, what flavor connection do you want? TCP or TLS, self-signed or CA-based certificates? This should really be an enumeration which is raw TCP, TLL, TLS self-signed, TLS CA based. And what really should be there is TLS CA based with address in the certificate. So it's locked to an address. Um, there's a port in there and the hello, just in case you wanna, didn't like the IANA assigned port. The TLS session is opened by the hello peer with the lowest IP address. 
the highest address acts as a client. There's some discussion of how this is handled in an internet exchange that has route servers. Two comments about that so far is, one, that wasn't in the goal set. This is for a data center. And two is that all the route servers I know, and I do actually run routers that are on exchanges, are at the lowest addresses. So just don't field a server and you'll connect to the route servers. TLS, the hello said, whether it's CA based or self signed, if it's self signed, we call this trust on first use. I jokingly call it married on first date. Um, you've seen it's gone out of fashion, thank you, to less encrypt and free certificates. But um, you certainly remember browsers saying, I don't know this certificate, do you want to trust it anyway, et cetera, et cetera. So it's believed without question by the client. You do get integrity because you've got TLS. And if you disconnect and reconnect, you know you're reconnecting to the same attacker, um, if that is satisfied. Um, in general, we expect CA-based keying, which is enrolled in a certificate authority, and the server must use the cert, and the client therefore can check that the cert from the server is indeed signed because it has is been provisioned with the public key of the trust anchor. Okay, and they're actually, um, we won't go into detail here, but you can find it in RPKI um, router certificates. There are two modes of enrolling. One is self-generated on the router, and the other is generated in the CA. Okay, the choice of which is for the operator. So, you now have a TLS or TCP session, and you wish to have an L3 neighbor discovery session within it. There's a session ID, which is a nonce that identifies the session that will be there, and it's the same session until something bad happens. There's a serial number in each of the data PDUs. It's think of it as a checkpoint that if you decide to restart, you can tell your friend, hey, I've still got the same session ID. Can we resume from this serial number, please? And then there's a miscellaneous collection of attributes. Um, in this case, we're suggesting to not have predetermined attributes, but leave that entirely up to the, act, the operator. Okay. All PDUs are acknowledged. The acknowledgement is either of E type zero, there was no error and you're all happy, or error, actual errors. And the errors can be of various severities. And there's an error code and an error hint that look a lot like SMTP errors and browser errors, et cetera, with a code and a further subcode. Okay, so it's fully stateful. It's a session per peer. It does have restart. It can be resumed. Um, one of the co-authors is a major BGP freak, so he manages to argue for all these BGP-like features. Okay, so I want to tell you what IPv4 addresses I have. And as I said, there's a serial number. And then there's a count of the IPv4 addresses. And for each one, there's the address and the prefix length, but there's also flags. 
Am I announcing or withdrawing that V4 address? Is it a primary or secondary? Is it underlay or overlay? Is it a loop back? There can be more in reserved at the moment. So for instance, you might have a V4 encapsulation PDU that says, here's my primary address and here's a loopback address. And if later this system says, hey, peer and peers peer with the following address and it hands you the loopback address, you know to forward through the primary. Okay. Of course, there's IPv6 and MPLS v4 and v6. So now we want to communicate BGP stuff. It's meant for arbitrary layer above layer three protocols, so far only defined for BGP. There's a PDU upper layer um, protocol configuration. It's only defined for BGP. And then it has a list of sub -TV TLVs with a count of the elements in that list. <clears throat> the idea is still to provide the absolute minimal set of configuration parameters for BGP open to succeed. You don't want to duplicate what's going to be in BGP open because multiple sources of truth are rep recipe for death. Okay, so what's my ASN? What's my IPv4 peering address? Of course, there's a v6 version too. That prefix length is an error. It has to be removed because it's just the address. You know the prefix length from the base PDU. Okay, there's authentication data. And there's whether you have GTSM TTL check. And that's all you really need. Of course, there's one for an IPv6 peering. Even though um, the BGP SEC says that the same AS and two devices can only have one peering. Thank you, Robert, who's reminded me of this hidden fact. Um, practices they actually do. So you can set up a V6 and a V4 peering with the same PDU. Remember that the base protocol provided marked loopbacks. So are these features or bugs? I think it's a matter of taste. It's sta stateful and restartable. It's rigid as handshakes and pacing, solid confirmation. It's got TCP, it's a based over TCP. If you have BGP, you have TCP. You may not have TLS, though I think any modern device certainly probably does. But if you're rolling out a data center, um, I would think you've got it, but you, know, you don't have to. If you want security, do you roll your own or shut up and use TLS? In the security world, rolling your own security is a uh, obscene statement. Okay, it provides large scale, probably more than BGP needs. Um, the thought is for EVPN, but the scaling really, if you're not using it, only costs a few bits in the length fields. You don't actually have to fill 3,000 sub-PDUs. You just have to allow the length field to be big enough to handle it. That's pretty much it, except I have some questions and issues that we discussed in IDR and they're still interesting. How are parameters passed to BGP? Okay, in LSVR, I think it's BGPLS, but in IDR, the, the implementers say, hey, that's my business. It's under the table. My BGP speaks to my discovery. You don't tell me how to do it. 
But the question still stands, how has BTP started, restarted, and stopped? What's the timing? How do we communicate that? A friend have said, hey, pack it all in one ULPC PDU. When that PDU is received, you have all the parameters you need to start the sucker. If you receive another, restart it. Uh, he hasn't said how it stopped. When is discovery finished? And when should it be stopped? Should it be stopped? Right? If you're on multi-point, you probably want to keep going with the hellos because no, somebody new can come on. Okay, is the restart ability really needed? And that's my deck. Questions? Do I see snow out the window? Hey, Gunter, I don't know if you can see the queue. Hi, AC, just talk. Okay, AC Linda Ma, Cisco Systems. Oh, um, Talking to the first question, oh, Sorry. The, the first, the first qu comment I had was you were talking about forwarding. Do you envision this protocol actually installing routes to get it to the loopback address, or do you see that to be the under the un, under the purview of the clients of this protocol, like the for latter. example, BGP? the latter. Okay, so it, it it's like it's like LLDP discovery where we said we weren't going to install the route. Okay, uh, the second comment I had is that on this last page, a lot of times, like for instance, if you look at other protocols that give hints uh, to the, it, it's it's a hint, and you would never stop a protocol based on the discovery protocol. Once you start a session, it's up to the it's it's up to that protocol. Like for instance, a good example of this, of course, it's not used, it's used for libeliness detection, not for discovering the parameters, is BFD. So if uh well, I mean just because Agreed. you you just yes. disable BF, BFD. That doesn't mean you you would stop it, right? If you if, yeah. if you okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is why this is a question, right? Yeah. Remember, this was from IDR. Here. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. You right. BGP, here you've got BGP LS, so they can they have a signaling protocol which they can use to argue. Right. About it. I mean, the way I see all these discovery protocols, the parameters change. It's not compatible with the current session there's something that needs to be done the cap capabilities need to be renegotiated based on those it's up to be it would be up to bgp to to stop or restart the session that's the way i see it anyway thanks ac mm -hmm. yeah me also you know but then uh, as, a, as one of the contributors so, so something what we see also in the IGP world eh, when doing discoveries is there is an exchange of like, you know, interest for doing like strict BGP. So, you know, there have been some extensions in the hello, you know, do, ways of doing like discovery that the node actually is capable of doing B, you know, of BFD itself. Eh? So from the moment that the session is built up, that only then you can actually st start up the BGP or the ISAS or the OSPF and then do a fast failure if it actually fails. So is that something, you know, which you intend to include in this also, you know, to advertise a preference that BFD has to be established after your L3DN neighborship actually is established? Or do you I see them no, as, uh, they're not I... compatible, but... I have no objection to that. Anything which is which is not compatible in a data center, in my opinion, is a big red alarm because something broke in the provisioning system. Right? So if both sides aren't compatible for BFD, then that's an error. 
Kayer, I think, wanted to speak to the point. I can smell it. Yeah, that's a really good point, uh, Gunter. I think uh, um, this solution can benefit from auto discovering and auto negotiating BFT as well alongside of BGP. And uh, as you do that, I think um, you can address here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The fast, fast session deactivate. Thank you. You actually raised a point uh, where uh, we always made a claim that said um, that a good generic discovery protocol mechanism is needed. And here it comes um, that long side of BGP, you may need something like BFT negotiation to be in place also. Thank you. That's all I have. Could you drop that in an email, Gunter? Yes, no problem. I'll send to the list. Thank you. Preferably on the mailing list. Yes, yes. So any other questions or observations? Thank you very much. Thank you, Randy. Let me go back to the first deck here. Yeah, I, I just have one. Uh, are we still going? Are we still going to uh, progress this protocol in this working group? We are, aren't we? This is AC AC Lindum again from Cisco Systems. That's a question to the chairs, I guess. Yes. Yeah. The L three. L three DL. So. So we were thinking of, you know, so so when we do the rechartering, eh, then the idea would be to include L3DL, eh, the, the layer two technology, uh, as part of the charter of the working group itself. So this uh, this uh, cousin actually of of L3DL, eh, uh, it's relatively new. I'm, I'm not really sure yet, you know, if we if you know if we actually, if we would like to work upon two different sets here. It is something we can debate. But I have the impression that, you know, Alvaro wants to say something about that also because he lined up very quickly. Sorry, Paul, I'm going to stand in front of you. Uh, Alvaro Tanarodi. Uh, yeah, so that is the plan. And that is what we had agreed with the IDR chairs uh, way back when all this started. Uh, this was, of course, a few years ago. And it was before um, IDR put so much emphasis on discovery as well. Uh, we had, of course, consulted with them because, um, you know, what we're doing here is discovering the BGP peers, right? So we, we felt that it would uh, apply to other things. So yes, that is the intent. Um, we probably need to do one more round of um, syncing and consulting with uh, IDR just to make sure we're all in the same in the same on the same page, uh, but you know, barring any any issues, yes, this working group would then do L3DL. Um, as for uh, the layer three version, we'll need to uh, you know, have more conversations around that. Thank you, Paul. Paul, uh, uh, yeah, yes. Paul Hong in uh, Tulak Networks. Um, I had a, just, I mean, it's my ignorance on the layer three discovery of uh, hello uh, multicast. How, how is that contained within the network? Are there filters or ACLs or something that keep those things from flooding all over the place or do they just flood all over the place? Two things. One, it's point to point links. Two, it's GTSM, TTL count. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks. Um, back to, Alvaro's point, um, um, this, this, this layer three discovery is just here informatively. I don't think we're, I mean, if you want it, if the chairs and Alvaro want it in this group, that's fine. It was really intended to be informative here. Uh, yeah, um, you and I are, are in sync, Randy. Thanks. Right. And, and there are some interesting things in it that 
some of the PDUs were a little further developed than the last time you saw L3DL. So they'll merge and they'll go both their own ways. And IDR will decide what they want, layer two or layer three or both. And God knows, we're just trying to uh, be friendly and accommodating. I see. AC Lindham, Cisco Systems. Hey, I was just going to comment on the uh, scope of the PDUs. Uh, I have read these drafts, but not before this IETF. I haven't read the latest iteration of them. So I don't remember remember everything, but wouldn't I would think you would just use the all routers uh, multicast address, which is link scoped in both IPv6 and IPv4, and then it would never go beyond one link. Or are you you thinking these are going to go beyond one link? These discovery packets. Beyond one. I mean beyond one hop. It's early in the morning. I was thinking Sue would speak to that, but if not, oh, she's left. Um, it's allowed, but that's a configuration option. Um, it's currently not envisioned to do so. Certainly not one layer, more than one layer three. The question is whether layer two, care okay, want to speak, go for it. Yeah, layer two, you get that for you get that for free. I mean, with with uh, yep. it's, it, it, at layer two, so yeah, that that is this is Kail Patel again, uh, Arkis. That is how you would probably want to do, um, just as you have it to all routers. AC. My apologies for not not having. I, I, I haven't read, like I said, I haven't read it in the last month. Okay, can you have still in the, the queue or? Okay, then I think we, if there's like no further questions, uh, then I think we have reached the end of the session here. So. So we have used about like, you know, 40 minutes from the two hour slot. So you got like a, like one hour and 20 minutes back. Thank you all. Efficient protocols, efficient protocols. <laughs>